Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. This module is on configuring Windows 7 mobility. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements from the section of the 7680 exam on configuring mobile computing. This is 10% of your exam requirement. And we need to understand how to configure offline file policies. I need to go through the configuration of transparent caching, and also how to create and migrate a power supply configuration for your mobile device. There are a lot of options available in Windows 7 relating to the usability of the operating system when on a mobile device. And this is set up so that if you're sitting in an airplane, you can turn the power requirements down. You don't need a network connection necessarily. And you can make sure that your battery is going to last as long as possible. There's also a need, especially on mobile devices, to have access to the data all the time. And that means all the time whether you're directly connected to the network or whether you're offline and maybe would like to be able to work with files seamlessly and have those files synchronized later when you connect back to the network. You also would like to be able to access files perhaps on a network share. And then when you disconnect from the network, still have those files available to you. Also find a way that you could make access to those files faster, especially on these really slow network connections that you tend to get if you're on a mobile device in a hotel or on an unknown network. Power optimization is extremely important on mobile devices, perhaps even more so in today's environment where almost all of our devices tend to be mobile. You want to optimize that battery and somehow get just a few more minutes out of it than what you're getting already. We're going to go through all of these different scenarios and talk about how we can optimize these on a Windows 7 operating system. The first technology I want to talk about is one called Offline Files. This is a really nice function to have available, especially if you disconnect from the network a lot, because this makes files available to you even if you're offline, whether you've lost connectivity to the machine where that share is stored, or whether you're disconnecting and going on a trip, you're on a plane, you still might want to have access to those files. What's even nicer about this is that when I do connect back to the network, it behind the scenes automatically will resync that file so that if you were the only one to edit that file while you were gone, it simply takes the one you were editing and updates the one that's on the server. If the one on the server has been modified while you've been gone, then you'll get a prompt. You can go through a conflict resolution process and determine, is this something I should create a new copy of, or should I replace the one that's there? There's a few things we can work with here, and we're going to start with configuring this on the share so that we as the end user can make the determination of having these files always available to us when we are offline. This offline file process may be very seamless to us, the end user, but there's quite a few different ways to use offline files behind the scenes. The first one is when you are in online mode where we're writing to the server whenever we're working with these files. When we're reading, we may be reading from a local cache. And I'll talk more about caching in just a bit. There's also something called an auto offline mode, which means our server that we're connected to on that share suddenly disappears. And if that happens, our machine automatically goes to a local copy of the file to do whatever we need to do. Even though the server is not there, it will tell us that it's offline. We'll still be able to use it as if it's still available and on that computer. And what's going to happen is every two minutes, your machine will check and see, is that server back? Is the access to those files available to us again? And if it is, it goes back into its online mode, and we go back to that original configuration. There's another method called a manual offline mode. Maybe we would just like to go offline. We can click a button and go into this offline mode. We're not going to check every two minutes to see if we can go back online. We're going to stay offline until you decide that you would like to go back online again. The last mode is called a slow link mode. And we set a parameter by default at 64 kilobits per second. And if the speed of the link to that server drops below that number, we will automatically start using the local cached version of that file rather than the one that happens to be out there on the server. 
And what another thing that happens here is we don't automatically synchronize this. We're going way too slow over the network to synchronize and update the file that's out there. So we're, as long as we're below that 64 kilobits per second, almost everything that we're going to do is be in a local configuration. Even though we're online, even though we can see the server, we're going to pretend that we can't. We're going to do everything local on our computer. I'm on my Windows 7 workstation, and I'm connecting to a share that's out on a server. Uh, that's a share called SG1. It's my H drive, and I've got three folders out there right now. I have an archived mission reports, I have a gate diagnostic reports, and an off world briefings folder. The gate diagnostic report, as you recall, is one that we encrypted using EFS. So that's why it has that green color. Inside of it, it has some files. But maybe those are the files that I would like to have available if I happen to go offline or I take this machine and go off the network somewhere. I'm on a plane, I'd still like to have access to those. If I right mouse click on that folder, you'll see the option here that says Always Available Offline. And if I check that, it's going to prepare files so they're always available offline. There, it's done with that. And now that particular folder is one that's always going to be available to me. In fact, I'm going to go back to my computer. And if I go back to this H drive, you'll see it's got the little icon next to it now that shows it's one that will be synchronized. And it's a, one that's available to us when we're on, online or offline. You can see that the state is always available. And if we do happen to go offline, it is also going to be always available, even if that server isn't there anymore. Why don't I go over to the server? I'm going to pull out the network connection. We're going to see what happens to our folders here. I've just simulated a network outage by pulling the cables, the network cables, out of the back of the server. And I've gone back and clicked on the gate diagnostics reports. And you can see it's trying to access those files right now. You can see the status bar up here as it's creeping across just to see if those folders and those files happen to be there any longer. When it gets to the end of this, it'll determine, well, I can't get to the server anymore. Let me go into an offline mode. And from that point on, everything will still be available to me because those files are made available to me locally. You can see right now that our status is actually offline. We are not connected to that folder. Uh, but we are always available with the state that we're in. And if I was to double click these reports, they're here. I can look into these files and modify them and make changes to them. I can add, if I click Safety Overrides, I can add new, new safety info in here. And I can save this file and close this document. And it's updated. It put the new date and time in there. Even though I'm offline, I'm able to work with it. Notice the folders I can't access any longer have X's next to them. So graphically, I can see exactly what's going on, even if those files aren't available to me directly. Because I've created these offline files, they're stored locally on my machine, and I can work with them as if I am directly connected. Let's go back to the server now, and let's reconnect those network cables and see what happens. My network connection has been reestablished. You can see my offline status is now online. The gate diagnostics reports are still there. And we can sync any offline files in this folder if we'd like to manually. But behind the scenes, that file has already been updated on the server. If there were any conflicts with this, we would be able to run through a synchronization process to determine what we would like to do with these different versions of the files. Ideally, all of this would be automatic behind the scenes. In fact, we would have had to really look at the icons and really look at our status to know that we had really left the network. Otherwise, we'd have exactly the same type of access that we're always used to having to these files, regardless of whether we were online or offline. There are a lot of different group policy settings for using offline files. You want to be able to have a lot of control over this as an administrator. And there are quite a few of them available. If we look in our computer configuration policies under our administrative templates for the network configuration, there is an offline files folder. And you can see there are a lot of different policies that we can set. And these are things that you might think would be associated with the offline files, whether we can allow or disallow the use of the offline files, what the event logging level should be for offline files. Should certain files not be cached? Maybe you have very, very large image files or video files 
or files that you just don't want to cache on local computers from a security perspective, you can choose those. What should happen when the server disconnects? What is our slow link speed set to? What do we want that value to be? So a lot of control you would have over this group policy object. Just go into that offline files folder, and you have complete control of exactly how this is going to work for your end users. There's another built-in feature of Windows that can help with access to files called transparent caching. This is something that is used to increase performance over wide area network links, especially if you're using and accessing a lot of files over a very slow wide area network connection. This does not sync anything. This is just a caching technology. It simply takes a file that you've previously opened, keeps a copy of it on your computer, so that if you'd like to open it again, it'll be there and available for you. This is a lot more flexible than what we were using with Branch Cache. If you recall with Branch Cache, we were dealing with Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. This transparent caching is something that works with Windows 7 Professional. We don't have to have domain services on the machine. The files aren't distributed across multiple systems or on a centralized server. This is a very simple process. When we open a file, it keeps a local copy also on our computer. When we try to open that file again, it queries the server to see if the file has changed. If the file has not changed, we'll simply use our local copy of it. If the file has changed, we'll then pull down a new version. So it's something that, that optimizes that. If nothing's happened to the file, we'll just use the local copy, and it'll speed things up quite a bit. This is something that will kick in automatically if we have a configured round trip latency that begins to be exceeded, especially over wide area network connections, wireless connections, maybe non-terrestrial links. We can set a policy, a group policy, that sets up a latency. And whenever we hit that latency, we'll start saving some files locally on our hard drive. The group policy that we'll look at is enable transparent caching. It was then that big list of offline files policies we looked at before. And if we enable that, we'll simply use that automatically. Whether you're plugged into the wall on a desktop computer or whether you're on a laptop system that's going to be mobile and running from a battery, you may want to configure how Windows uses power. This is very useful. You can determine when your display is going to power off, determine when your hard drives are going to spin down. This is useful for conserving power, but of course, when you're on a battery, this could really, really help you quite a bit. You'll find these configuration settings under the Control Panel in Power Options. Now when you look at some of these power options, you've got some other choices of what can happen when you hit the power button. And there's some different uh, terms here called sleep, hybrid sleep, and hibernate. These power down modes are some that are used in different ways depending on what you're choosing. If you're choosing to have the computer sleep whenever you push the power button, the processor turns off. You're not going to be processing anything. But power is still on the memory of the computer. And that means whenever you power back on, it's going to come on pretty quick. It doesn't have to load anything from the system. It doesn't have to reload your operating system from scratch. Your mouse and your keyboard, for instance, will still remain powered so that if you press a key or you move your mouse, it will wake up and then come back active again. Probably something that doesn't work exceptionally well on a laptop that's away from a power source. So you've got some other options, like hybrid sleep, where the processor is turned off, the memory is still active, and a copy of that memory is written to disk. This is similar to the sleep mode, except you're not going to have the situation where a mouse and a keyboard might shake things awake. And you've always got a copy there that's written to disk in case anything happens. And the mode that probably works very well for laptop computers is a hibernate, where your processor turns off, your memory power to the machine turns off, really all devices on the computer turn off, and any contents of memory are written to disk. This takes a few minutes as it writes things off to disk, especially if you have a lot of memory. It also depends on how fast your hard drives are. Then when you start your computer, you'll have to wait just a minute or so as it loads everything in from that file back into memory. But at that point, your system's back up and running where you left it. You don't have to perform that, that start from scratch as if you were booting the operating system from the very beginning again. Of course, as an administrator, you have access to all of these power systems and configurations from Group Policy under Computer Configuration, Administrative Templates, System, 
in power management. You can see button settings, hard disk settings, notification settings, sleep settings, video and display settings, and then power plan information that you can set. There's also a number of things configurable at the command line. Power CFG is a command line utility that you can use to manage all of this also right there from the command line. You can find your power settings from the Windows Start menu. I can choose Control Panel. And I'm going to choose the power settings for my laptop here. I chose this laptop instead of a virtual machine. So we'd be able to see some of the different options you have when you have a system that has a battery inside of it. The options you get on those laptops are a little bit different than the options that you'll get on a desktop system that never has those battery options. You can see different power plans. Require a password when it wakes up. Choose what the power buttons do. Choose what happens when you close the lid. And there are some plans that are already configured in here, a balanced, a power saver, and a high performance plan available. And I can choose any of these and have a look at them. You get an option on what you can do when you're on the battery and what you can do when you're plugged in. These are just to turn off a display and put the computer to sleep. But if you'd like access to additional functionality, you can change advanced power settings. This dialog box gives us information about things for the hard drive, desktop background settings. In fact, you can see you can turn off the slideshow if you're running a slideshow on your computer so that it's not constantly going to disk, pulling up more graphics and putting on your background. It's paused when it's on battery and plugged in. It is available. You've got wireless adapter settings and how it uses the power saving modes. So a lot more access to this when you're in the advanced settings. But then again, there's a lot more to choose from. So it's something that Windows 7 hides from you unless you specifically want to go in and configure some of those things. I also mentioned there's the command line options available. If we go to our CMD, there is the power CFG. And with a slash question mark, you can look at all the options available. And as you can see, a lot of things just went by. I'm going to scroll back up to the top so you can see that you have complete access to all of these configuration settings right here at the command line. You can change them, add different settings, change the way that different schemes are being used. You can modify different values of these options. Again, we want to be sure you have the exactly the same access to everything at the command line. So you can run those in your PowerShell scripts. You can run them with some scripts that run when people log in, or just some scripts that you would use to configure the machine if it was offline. This is an option that gives you the ability to have the user configure options for power, have you configure them with group policies, and of course, configure them at the command line. Let's review some of the topics we covered in this video. Our first question, how often does Windows check for connectivity when it's in offline mode? The default configuration is always going to check to see, is my server back? How about now? Is my server ever returned? It's going to do that every two minutes. And the next question, in which power down modes does Windows 7 write memory contents to disk? There were two modes, actually, that were used when we were writing the memory to the disk itself. That was a hybrid sleep mode and a hibernate mode. And our last question, which command line utility allows you to configure power settings? And that's one that allows you to set up a power script, run it at the command line shell to be able to run Power CFG, configure anything relating to power on your Windows 7 computer. That covers our requirements for this video on these mobility options. We've looked at configuring offline file policies, transparent caching, and also working with our power policies. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, or you'd like to send me a message, you can visit our website at professormesser.com.